What's up everybody? I am Sam and I'm back with my weird pink flamboyant cutoff shirt because I have another project that I'm working on today. So stick around and I'll let you know what we got going on. So this week's project is gonna be changing one of my bioactive enclosures and revamping it to a cork panel. If you saw my bioactive build that I did with the cork panel, it's a very new system that I use. And honestly, I am in love with it. It's so much better than the foam. And it just, in the long run, I think it'll be way better because I built all these enclosures with the foam backgrounds and you can already see the foam starting to poke through, which sucks and it's annoying and it's really making me OCD. So. A couple of months ago, I actually ended up giving away my Rescue Quest to Gecko Bellini. Um, I just was wanting some more space and stuff like that. So I made sure to go to a home that, you know, someone would be taking care of it. So I recently, in the last couple of months, got into dart frogs. So what I need to do is I want to redo this enclosure. All the plants are already good, so I can just hold them systematically or temporary in my Homiana enclosure. And what I'm going to do is take apart this whole background put it up with the cork panel, carve it out, put the plants back in, and we'll have a new bioactive enclosure for these dark frogs. So I'm gonna take you guys with me on this whole journey and let's get started. So my first step that I'm gonna do is make this as light as possible because with all the rocks and everything in here, I'm gonna have to take this off. It's gonna be super heavy. So basically the first thing I'm gonna do is take out all the plants that I have in here and I'm gonna transfer them into my Conixus hominiana enclosure. They don't bother with the plants, which is great, so I don't have any worry about them eating the plants, but these are non-toxic plants, just so you guys are aware. So basically, yeah, I'm gonna take everything out, make it as light as possible, take everything out of the enclosure that I can, so that way when I pull it off the shelf, it's gonna be much lighter. So here comes a speed run. everything ripped off perfectly but I am gonna clean it up a little bit more and you'll see how I do that here in a second so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually just gonna toss away all the lava rocks I had some extra clay drainage pebbles that I'm gonna use for the, the drainage layer on this enclosure I like them a little bit better um, just because most of my enclosures are set up that way sorry my dog's barking he's really annoying um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and toss all these lava rocks out and I'll kind of show you what we're gonna do right after that. All right so we got everything basically taken out of here. So I just came up with Revelation. I'm gonna see if I can try to build this entire enclosure without taking it off my shelf because that's gonna be a pain in my ass. But what I'm gonna do is a few weeks ago, I went to a reptile, or not a reptile store, a big box annoying stupid pet store. I got one of these and it has this little razor blade at the end. So what I'm gonna take is some isopropanol alcohol. I'm gonna put it in this spray bottle and then spray the enclosure everywhere so that way I can use that scraper and clean all this extra debris off and get the extra silicone off. I think I'll be able to make this work. We're gonna test it out and hopefully we can get everything done without having to remove the cage from the, the, the whole shelf. <music> All right guys, well, it didn't get exactly fully clean as I would like, but I'm just gonna go ahead and wing it because that's what we do in the reptile industry is we sometimes just wing it. But the good thing is, is that the cork panel will cover all these little splotches that are hanging up. And then obviously on the doors, I'm gonna do you know a much more thorough cleaning on there. So the next step is I'm gonna go ahead and clean this all out, spray it down with some water, use some paper towels, get everything as sterile and clean as possible. So that way the next step is I can get the cork panels on there. All right, boys and girls. So next step is I wanna get the cork panel cut to size. 
I was gonna try doing it long ways, that way I would fill up a taller bit, but that means I would have to cut off a smaller piece. So what I'm gonna do is actually cut it more horizontally, and that way I can make use of as much of the panel as I can. So, let me put this down right here. I had a handy dandy knife, there we go. So I'm gonna go at about 17 and a half inches, and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it right here. Now I got a good notch, and then we will cut it straight with this metal ruler. And then, all right, now, time for the satisfying part. We're just gonna take this and lift it up really closely. Ah, that nice crack. All right, so, sorry about my annoying dog again. I only have a little bit of silicone, but we're gonna make it work for at least this one piece. I'm gonna have to pick some more up tomorrow, but go ahead and... I'm gonna stick the silicone onto this part. And then we're gonna go ahead and place it onto the enclosure. All right, so we got this right here. It is a tight squeeze, which is actually a good thing because that means it'll stick up as I'm placing it in. All right, so we'll go ahead and get that. I'm gonna put some good pressure on there so that way we know that it is getting fully placed on. Now, what we're gonna do is basically repeat this. We're gonna put one here, one here, and then we're gonna put smaller pieces down here so that way, you know, we have a full backdrop. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start doing all that and then I'll kind of show you guys what we get after all that's done. All right, so we got everything all in place here. It is nice and stuck on. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna be using a knife as well as a wire brush and basically just carving everything out to make it look a little bit less flat and give it more of a bumpy feel to it. All right guys, so I basically just went ahead and what I did was just scrape off the top. It comes off very easily. But the idea is I just want it to be a little bit rough so it doesn't look ugly and flat anymore. What I'm gonna do now is get this whole thing all cleaned out and then I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the enclosure together. All right, next I'm gonna be adding in my clay balls as my drainage layer. balls in I'm gonna be using my substrate barrier from the closure because we're just gonna reduce reuse and recycle so let's go ahead and put this in all right guys so now it's time to put in my substrate and that's my boy Yuki so for my substrate I'm gonna be using some coconut core some organic topsoil a little bit of sand and some sphagnum moss so I'm gonna go ahead and mix all that up and then place it inside the enclosure Add all the plants back into here now. All right, with the plants back in here, I'm gonna go ahead and put in some hardscape. So I'm gonna include some cork bark and a couple of little sticks that I had before in here. So we'll try to figure out how we want to get this set up.
right, with this being bioactive, I am gonna be adding some microfauna here. So I got a bunch of springtails and I added some charcoal into the substrate. So that will give them a good medium to survive. And basically I'm just gonna go hit these guys and get a bunch of them in here. And this will also make a good snack for my poison dart frog as well. Now for my cleanup crew, I'm gonna be using some dwarf white isopods. We're gonna be throwing this in there. So after adding all my plants and everything and my moss and other little things here and there, I might add some more vining plants up here, but this is basically what the end of the setup is gonna look like. It's pretty simple. I got the cork panels here. I didn't cut too deep into it, but eh, it's whatever, it's a big deal. So next step is gonna be trying to get the frog in here, which is gonna be difficult because every time I try to get the frog or even walk near them, they always hop away. So I'm gonna figure out how I can do that. All right, don't ask me how I did it, but I was able to get my little guy over here. And here he is exploring his new home. So we'll give you a couple of shots of him exploring around and everything. We'll give this time to establish. Um, I did deal with an invasion of slugs in the previous enclosure. So hopefully transferring everything you might've taken care of that, but we're gonna let this grow out for some time and then give you guys an update on what everything looks like for him. And in the meantime, we are gonna start looking for another mate. I do just wanna get another one in here. I'm hoping they're both female. I don't really look to breed them, but I do want another one in here because I think it'd be nice to have pairs of twos for all my dart frogs that I will soon have. Okay, so I did end up taking my palm tree actually out of my original dart frog enclosure. Um, and I replaced it with, so I basically switched plants out and I actually really like it because now it's not so covered in here. And with that enclosure being taller, that gives the palm tree more space to grow up. The palm tree had already reached the top of this within a few months, it was already in here. So I do like this a lot better for these frogs. And then here I have a beautiful final product for this enclosure. Mm -hmm. 